Hey everyone, Daniel Rubino here, at Windows Central, and this is your Microsoft and Windows News Roundup. All right, first up, Asus. So they have not had a good week. In a story that first ran on Motherboard, it was pointed out that Asus has a backdoor Trojan problem. So if you don't know a lot of PCs, especially from OEMs, come with their own updating software. That software then allows them to install drivers, configure some aspects of the hardware, and install BIOS updates. In fact, HP, Lenovo, Dell, almost all of them have this. Unfortunately, the one from Asus had a backdoor to it that some hackers were able to exploit. Around 57 to 100,000 computers were affected, and it was a pretty serious thing that allowed hackers to install malicious software through this back door. Now to cover their tracks, the hackers also use all sorts of tricks, including making the file size exactly the same as the official version. Asus has since patched the software and it's supposed to be pretty safe now, but this does highlight a problem with this kind of software. Now Microsoft has been working with its OEM partners to getting drivers and BIOS updates going through Windows Update, that is Microsoft themselves host it, and it comes through with your OS updates. It's a much more secure system. A lot of companies are already doing this, but you can see we're still having issues here. This is just one more reason though why we need to get rid of these apps. Surface Hub 2, it's finally coming out. So we heard about Q2 2019 as the release date for Microsoft's giant collaborative display. It's over 51 inches, it's over 4K, and it's absolutely beautiful. Now we did kind of see this last year at Ignite that we were unable to film it or take photos. We could just kind of look at it and just get a brief tour, but that's all going to change. April 17th, New York City, Panos Panay, the Surface team will be there to unveil Surface Hub 2 to the public. It's gonna be actually a small group of media there, will be of course in attendance, we will be able to actually see this thing. There will also be pricing and the exact availability for Surface Hub 2, which will be announced. This is all good news if you're a big company or a school who's looking to invest into the system, but this also means we're probably not gonna be getting new Surface products, at least in the spring. So no new Surface Book 3, no new Surface Pro, and that's a bit unfortunate, so we'll have to wait until the fall, which is the other time that Microsoft likes to announce those new products. But if you're interested in Surface Hub 2, we'll pay attention to April 17th. We'll be there covering it live. Next up, Surface headphones. Microsoft released a new firmware patch this week. It's one of the first ones that I've received for my headphones, and it addresses a few concerns, including improving the audio quality of the Bluetooth connection. It also now allows you to manage up to eight devices paired with the headphones. Now, you can only have two that are active at a time, but you can still have eight devices paired in total. That's actually pretty huge, especially if you're using the Sony headphones. You can't do that at all. This is one of the big selling points of the Surface headphones that works really well. The other thing you can do now is you can plug in the USB Type-C to recharge them while also having the three and a half millimeter headphone jack plugged in and still use active noise cancellation and the volume. And that may sound kind of trivial, but a lot of headphones, you can't do that. On my Bose, when I plug them into charge, I couldn't even do a firmware update for them. So a lot of these kind of headphones, it's one or the other. Microsoft's allowing you to do them all. Now, if you want the full change log, well, we're gonna post it right here and show you what's new. Let me know what you think about the Surface headphones if you're gonna get them now. Xbox One S All Digital Edition. So the question was, what will this thing actually look like? As it turns out, a lot like the Xbox One S. So our games review editor, Jez Corden and Matt Brown teamed up and they got an actual inside look of what this device is gonna look like and we put mockups on Windows Essential and it looks just like an Xbox One S except it doesn't have a digital drive in there for DVD. And the reason I think Microsoft is doing this is to, well, save money. So they could just reuse the current chassis without doing a huge revision to the hardware. After all, we don't know how well this thing is going to sell. As to when will it become available, look for an announcement in mid-April on sale for May 7th. As far as pricing, well, it's gonna be a little expensive as far as the initial pricing, but we do expect this to go on sale eventually for around $199. Next up, your phone. So Microsoft's project here to allow you to use your phone with your Windows 10 PC is getting some new advances. One of them is gonna be the My Phone feature, which will mirror the Android device on your computer. That means you can launch apps and control it directly from your PC without having to take it out from your pocket. Now this is in very early stage testing. In fact, it only works with the Surface Go and a Samsung Galaxy S9 or S8, which is kind of weird, but that's what we expect is they're gonna control the Bluetooth stack here to get some early testing and feedback. Expect it to go wide later on. If you want to see it in action, well, we did a whole video on that. You can go check it out and see what it's going to look like. Next up is the Microsoft Edge browser. So as was reported a few months ago, they are switching to the Chromium project as the back end for its browser, replacing Edge HTML. Now since then, we've had a couple leaks, including screenshots, but this week the entire thing leaked out and you can go and install it yourself. Now this precedes Microsoft's expected upcoming announcement about when you can just test it 
through its preview program where you can get on the safe version that will actually update itself. I don't actually recommend you go out and just download a random executable. That's a little bit dangerous. Stay tuned though. All this is a build up to the fact that Microsoft is about to release this. So the official version is coming. So how is it so far? Well, we did a whole video walkthrough of it and it's actually really good. It's very polished. And yeah, you can actually make this your default browser today and start using it. Now at first it still looks like a lot like the Chrome browser, but if you go into about flags, you can actually enable the edge theme. And all of a sudden now looks like your edge browser, including having a dark mode and those nice context menus. Now not everything works right now. For instance, there's no share menu, there's no inking. There's a few things missing. Scrolling could be a little bit smoother. All that is expected to come later on though, but Currently where it is, it's a pretty impressive browser, but you tell me, what do you think? Are you going to switch to Edge now? Or are you going to stick with Firefox? Leave me a comment, tell me what you think. All right, there's a quick summary of all the major Microsoft and Windows news out there. Now, if you want more information about any of this, go to the description below. We have all the links to the major stories. Otherwise, leave me a comment, tell me what you think and what Microsoft could be doing better. Thanks for watching, take care everyone.